central Indiana, the heart of Indiana's booming economy. We want to make sure that we hire good local talent that can help us. From white collar to blue, from factory. Just looking for a better opportunity. Jobs are being created. Chomping at the bit for you to come work for them. You show initiative. You can become anything you want. Doing things that you love is the only way that you will be able to succeed in anything that you do. And RTV6 is working for you. Connecting you with the information, the contacts, the resources you need. This is an RTV6 News special, Hiring Hoosiers. I'm Rafael Sanchez. The need is urgent to find people with the right skills to fill thousands of open jobs right here in central Indiana. It is one reason for this job fair in one of the fastest growing communities in our state, Boone County. Employers like AgriLiant, Kroger, and the Zionsville Community Schools are among the many looking to hire. There's a growing demand in key areas as well, like advanced manufacturing, construction, healthcare, IT and business, transportation, and logistics. Let's check in with Meredith Barrett, who's on the job fair floor. Raphael, one central Indiana company looking to hire a number of people is Ken's Foods, located in Lebanon. The company has been in operation here in central Indiana for about a year, yet you still have plenty of positions to fill. I'm here with Levi Shepard, who's going to tell me a little bit more about those. Yeah, absolutely. So as we continue to grow uh, in Lebanon, uh, we've started, we opened in April last year. And uh, we wanted to make sure that we come out to local job fairs and try to get candidates that are local to support some of the positions. So we have anything from warehouse to packaging to processing. Uh, we have maintenance, sanitation, quality assurance positions. And uh, looking for good, hardworking local people to help us join the team and join the family and um, come on board with us. So. Levi, thank you. Just one business with that message, one of dozens here in central Indiana looking for talented and skilled workers to fill those roles. This is all about our Hiring Hoosiers initiative. It's about working for you to connect you to employers and programs that will hire, train, or expand your horizons. We start on the roads of Indiana, talking to truckers who drive every day. Their job is one that is often overlooked, but there's a big need for more drivers to fill those empty seats. We're just not getting enough new entrants into the industry to replace those who are leaving. But the job perks will hopefully help recruit nearly 90,000 truckers a year. There's plenty of trucking industry business where drivers can be home every day. They might work a first shift, second shift, or third shift, but it's still a full-time and regular, you know, daily type They're job. From shifting gears to tapping keys, high-tech jobs and coding are a big part of the future for Hoosiers. We have those skills, the confidence, not just that we can code, but that we believe we can code and code well. 1150 is a 12-week immersion program where you can learn how to program computers in JavaScript, .NET, and Python. Within three to five years, those coders can be making six-figure salaries. We have a robust and rich environment of technology here, and we need talent. Farming is a tough business, and it's not easy keeping the next generation on the farm. But there's a big push to invest and empower future farmers to succeed. It's pretty cutthroat, and so if you want to stay on top of it and ensure that we're going to be able to farm for generations to come, you have to take advantages of what sets you apart. Jennifer Swope is working on an eighth-generation farm in Bartholomew County. She landed an internship with LG Seeds, a program offering mentorships, teaching how to run a business, and providing insights on agricultural trends. Hoosiers are also breaking stereotypes when it comes to gender roles, like Jessica Reedling, who started at Comcast as the only female service technician. Well, there's not that many of us that actually work in the cable industry. Now Comcast is launching an aggressive effort to hire more women as service techs. And we found many Hoosiers are willing to switch career paths, a way to make a better life 
for themselves. I was a baker and I loved it and it, it was wonderful, but it didn't really pay very well. Subaru of Indiana has been a dominant employer since 1989. Even so, on occasion, they face challenges with some employees. We have some turnover just based on people not being willing to get up in the morning or uh, being able to make it to work in the afternoon at 4.30. The benefits, though, are what keep many coming back day in and day out. We spend more time you know, with these people than we do our own families and friends, so we make the best of it and we get along really well. When it comes to finding a job or landing a job, your stories have struck a chord, especially since December when we began this project from keeping a family business alive to getting an interviewer to say, you're hired. Two words that Matt Knight wanted to hear, especially after applying for over 2,000 jobs. Matt Knight is educated. I'm a graduate from the University of Indianapolis with a degree in political science with minors in history and information systems. Qualified. I also got my a certification about two years back in November of 2017. And experienced. His resume showcases internships, involvement and more. But years after graduation, he can't find a job. He's kept track over the years of how many times he's tried. I've applied to over 2,000 jobs. Matt, who has high functioning autism, can only put his finger on one thing that may be holding him back. I just come off as a little maybe cold and detached in the interview or maybe just nervous in the interview. I I'm pretty sure it's the interview. He's worked with career coaches and has been offered a handful of jobs in call centers, but he wants a meaningful career. When it comes to me and people like me, we're hardworking, we're dedicated, we tend to think outside the box, and especially for someone like me who is very conscientious, we tend to get the job right. We, I mean, it's always our goal to try to get the job right first and then try to address any problems that we have later. So we try to get it we try to do the job as fast and as accurately as possible. His former professor James Fuller says those are all qualities Matt exudes. I know him to be punctual, always present, always on time, always got his work done, and a hard worker who will, when he doesn't understand something, will try to figure it out. In the meantime, Matt is looking forward to the day his future employer tells him, you're hired. It's still a barrier in terms of understanding when it comes to people like me and potential employers. For some, the right job comes with finding the right work balance. We met a group of mompreneurs juggling life, work, and soccer practices. Life is a balancing act for Kelly Sutter, a mother of two little ones and the owner of her own marketing business. I feel like people have kids and they feel like they need to make a choice. But she spent most of her career in the corporate world. It was just this past September that I decided, hey, I have the experience and the passion for marketing and wanted to go out and do something on my own. And that's when I started Wild Flamingo Marketing. Kelly says her day-to-day -day workflow is priceless compared to what working a corporate nine to five cost her and her family. But she has a tool outside of her family helping her make it work. I have joined some networking groups that I've seen other moms do it and I was inspired by moms being able to, you know, somehow find that balance. Who's already tax season? We just look into our community to see who is very good at something and would like to teach other mompreneurs about it. One group is the Indie Mompreneurs, started by Stephanie Fisher in 2017. This woman's clothing boutique owner wanted to create a networking group that mothers can attend even with kids in tow. Today we have a CPA coming to discuss taxes and the new tax laws. So. Every meetup has a different discussion, different thing to learn, and it's free for moms to do it. It is Hoosier working women who are also mothers simply supporting other Indianapolis women making these lifestyles work. You can be a businesswoman, you can be a friend, you can be um, out in society and not just being mom. And so I think it helps you be a better mom. Balance is just one factor people consider when looking for a job. I'm joined by Molly Whitehead. Molly, tell me a little bit about your role at the job fair and why there are so many open jobs in Boone County. Sure, so I'm with the Boone County Economic Development Corporation. We're a public-private nonprofit here in the county and we're charged with recruiting and retaining employers to Boone County. So one of those 
things that we want to do here is have a job fair. We do one a couple of times a year, and um, it's designed to be that opportunity for the employers to share their message and hopefully recruit some candidates now or in the future. Wonderful. Now, we have seen a lot of growth in Boone County in recent years. Why is this such a good place to work? Yeah, I think our, just our geographic location. We're just a few minutes outside of Indianapolis, easily accessible to Lafayette, Chicago, and that makes us a desirable place. In addition to that, we just think it's a great place to do business where people want to be and where they want to grow. Absolutely. Now, if you take a spin around this job fair, you see quite a few industries here. It's really uh, showcasing the diversity of businesses here in Boone County. Talk a little bit about that. So our strategy the past few years has been to really diversify those companies. Instead of just having only logistics companies, we want to make sure we have manufacturing, complementary industries, office, information technology. So really any sort of company that you could potentially want here is in Boone County. It's when a very intentional effort that we've taken part of. And this is just the beginning. I'm sure in the next five, 10 years, we are going to see a lot of growth in Boone County, and that means more jobs. Yes, for sure. Want to do it in a very smart manner, grow, um, grow wisely, bring in those types of industries that, again, are a good complement to who we currently have here. Molly Whitehead, thank you so much for joining me. A thank wonderful you. job fair you're putting on right now. Back to you, Raphael. A job fair is not the only resource people are using to get ahead. We've connected with dozens of organizations using their services to help people land a job. About 476,000 Hoosier adults don't have a high school diploma. That can be a major obstacle to even getting an interview. Central 9 in Greenwood offers a free course where Hoosiers graduate with the equivalent of a high school diploma. Depending on each individual, that program can take one week to six months. The Indianapolis Public Library also offers help between the bookshelves. Job centers open up at certain branches on certain days. Library assistants not searching for books, instead helping Hoosiers search for jobs. Sometimes the help is as simple as giving someone access to the internet and showing them websites with job listings. Anyone who signs up for help can also take advantage of free resume printing and a free flash drive. For many of us, it starts with the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? Have you figured that out yet, Rob? I knew that in the third grade, PS7 in the Bronx, spent the entire year, that third grade year, in the corner because I was talking all the time. So I figured out, Meredith, that I should uh, find a trade where I could talk, get paid with a purpose. So here I am. How yeah. about you? I was in a similar situation, always getting in trouble for being a little too chatty in class, thankfully. I figured out that was a strength, not a weakness, and here I am. And I'm not good at math either, so that eliminated a lot of jobs, <laughs> and, too. And now you're co-anchoring Good Morning Indiana. I am. You're doing good. You're doing Thank good. Thank you. For many Hoosier youth, they're preparing for the jobs of the future. At first, I originally wanted to be an engineer, but then when I got, on my, hand, when I got my hands on this course, it kind of made me go into, into like the computer science path. This class of coders is one of nearly two dozen in Indiana using the Amazon Future Engineer course. And basically what they want us to do is use this scratch program to try to code this controller for a Mario type game. By exposing kids to these computer science skills, the online retailer is investing in kids who could become their future employees. This is what I really want to do. I want to be the best chef in America. <laughs> High school students are prepping food for the Threshold Restaurant, a training ground for those who want to work in the culinary industry. I wanted to start cooking because my grandmother, like I used to help her out in the kitchen. IPS students work in the kitchen, the front of the house, and get trained in food safety. They also work for dual credit at Ivy Tech, getting a jump start on more training that will help them land a job one day. It really helps you realize what you want to be whenever you get older and it like just gives you the drive and motivation. Young adults from ages 14 to 20 are exploring a future career as first responders. The Explorer program with the Washington Township Avon Fire Department lets them test the waters and get trained in CPR, basic EMT skills and firefighting basics. It gives them a chance to see if this high-risk job is worth the reward. 
they really push us to do a lot, and um, some of the things that we do um, seem almost impossible. Got down low. But once you really try it, it's like you're like, wow, because you can actually do that. As job seekers continue their critical hunt, we are just getting started. Maybe you're not ready to interview for a position just yet. Where do you start? And how do you know that job is right for you? Plus, the resources available right now online. You can consider a job fair a place of many opportunities. But before you come here, you must be prepared. From the resume to what to wear. Let's check in with the experts. Raphael, thank you. I'm joined in studio right now with some career experts. Kirk Mixler is the Director of Career Development at Franklin College and Jill Novotny works as the Director of Professional Development. So we want to get right to it. Jill, let me start with you. Okay. So the job hiring process, it can be stressful for a lot of people. So where do you even start? What is the first advice you give for people to take the first step? Yeah, well, I think they need to think about what they really want to do, right, and what they like. And it used to be you'd have your resume ready, but now you have to consider your social media and who you know and um, just sort of get your ducks in a row to start with before you launch into the search. So many options. So you really have a conversation with yourself mm -hmm. in essence, right? Yep. Yeah, I think uh, part of it too is really getting to know who you are. Again, it's not just what your strengths are, but uh, what are your work values? You know, what are those mm -hmm. things that you're looking for in a work site? Um, what are your interests? Yeah, because I think a lot of students, uh, a lot of people who go into jobs, they take a job because it looks good, but they may not really be interested in it and then transition out later. A lot of uh, advice that we hear or a lot of questions we hear about, how do I know what my skill set is? Mm -hmm. And so what do you have to look about and look at yourself and say, this is, these are the skills that I'm good at or skills I'm interested in? Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's those things that you kind of get lost in the moment in, right? Uh, time passes, you don't think about it you're enjoying what you're doing, whether that's analyzing things, writing code, or just talking to people, so. Or even reading, I know. Mm -hmm. For, for yep. me in this job, yep. reading was one, something a, a long time ago that, that was of interest to me, and so it has proven to be a skill asset today. Exactly. Yeah. What is the first, or the biggest mistake that people tend to make when they're uh, applying for jobs, or even looking for jobs? Because it's so easy just to hit that apply button. Um, People are applying for a job versus going into it with the attitude of, hey, I'm applying for this job, and man, this is something I really want. As you're selling yourself, going exactly. for that job, what exactly. is one piece of advice you would give? Just be ready to be resilient, right? Um, the job market's kind of tight now. Right. And so you may or may not get that first opportunity. So have a plan, um, think about your support system, and just be ready to continue on. And follow up, should you be persistent? Absolutely. Yes. Um, and, and two, I think one of the things that's lost in that whole click the apply button era that we are now is just the personalization. So if you have the opportunity to reach out individually to that person who's actually gonna get the job application, uh, people should do a little bit of research before they actually apply. Um, find a real name of somebody to actually send that cover letter to, um, do some networking to find if you know anybody in that company or that organization that can help get you in the back door to get that more personal touch. All right, Kirk and Jill, great advice there. And if you at home want some more advice on the job hunt, we have posted this information on HiringHoosiers.com. Once you've identified a job you would be interested in, the next step is finding the right opportunity. And for many, that means another way to start the job search is by powering up a computer and jumping online. LinkedIn reports that nearly half of all job seekers look for online job postings or check our social networking sites like LinkedIn as they get started. Here at RTV6, we have launched a hiring Hoosiers group specifically on LinkedIn, hoping to further help job seekers connect with the right opportunity for them. We will be posting weekly updating Hoosiers on the jobs we're featuring each week, as well as offering advice. That could be some tips on perfecting your resume or how to calculate what salary is right for you. So search hiring Hoosiers on LinkedIn and connect with us. We want this Hiring Hoosiers initiative to be something that can help improve your work life. As soon as we launched this initiative, the success story started rolling in. It was encouraging to us in the industry that there is uh, there's some interest out there for, for our industry. 
Hundreds of people signing up for free HVAC training classes after watching a story here on RTV6. Williams Comfort Air and Carmel says they went from having about a dozen people interested to more than 200 interested. The free training gives applicants an advantage and a much needed edge when they apply for jobs. And I have to say, OK, you know, I want, a, I want a career. I didn't want a job. I wanted a career. And then there is Jeffrey Hartfield, who you can find in the Flatwater Kitchen. He found out about Second Helpings, the seven week training program from his church. Second Helpings helps in the short term by providing meals and then in the long term through the training program that helps people find jobs in the kitchen. The day after he graduated, Jeffrey started at Flatwater. Since this story aired, he says more than a dozen people have come into the restaurant to say hi and try his food. Still ahead. Hoosiers lifting each other up to help land the job and keep the job. The inspiring stories of helping hands as our Hiring Hoosiers special continues. At RTV6, we're committed to telling stories of Hoosiers getting hired, no matter the obstacles. And we found many employers making it happen. When it comes to landing a job, it's all about the skills and what you bring to the table. But to get the interview, you need the basics, from a resume to your personal presentation. You don't want to go into an interview dressed in your laid back, chill at home type of clothes. From this experience right here, you know, you can learn how to dress, how to, you know, show yourself out. Upward Bound works with promising high school students, helping them get a diploma and head to college. That can include interviews, so working with success wear, they get the right clothing for the job. We're willing to work. We can work. We know how to work. We just need the opportunity to work. Living with a disability can present some challenges. Some employers may say no thank you to someone with a walking cane. But at Bosma Enterprises, it's all about helping those who are blind or visually impaired get to work. A lot of them want jobs, and the main thing that I see is it's giving them hope so that they don't give up and keep searching. A pizza shop in Greenwood isn't letting homelessness or lack of transportation stop them from hiring. Agape Pizza, started by a couple cooking up pies to serve to the homeless at their church. Now with a physical store, they're hiring transitional workers offering them rides to work. From our team here at RTV6, thanks for watching and tuning in to Hiring Hoosiers. We have news stories every day beginning at 6 a.m. on Good Morning Indiana and then on the news at 7. And you can connect with us on our Facebook fan page and our website, HiringHoosiers.com.